It is the object and duty of the society to uphold and protect the public interest in the administration of justice by one, preserving and protecting the rights and freedoms of all persons, two, ensuring the independence, integrity, and honor of its members, and three, establishing standards for the education, professional responsibility, and competence of its members and applicants for membership, and b, subject to paragraph a. One, to regulate the practice of law, and two, to uphold and protect the interests of its members. Although they certainly have the right to protect the interest of its members and to regulate the practice of law for their members, their ability to do that is subject to paragraph A, where you will find that they have the duty to preserve and protect the rights of all persons, the rights and freedoms of all persons. This means their ability to regulate is subject to our existing rights. Now this is the section that they use in court to try to get court orders barring people from acting as agents or in effect cutting their grass. They don't like it when other people do that and they point to this section claiming that no other person other than a practicing lawyer is permitted to engage in certain actions. Now the question is whether or not this section of this act is applicable to people who aren't lawyers. That's the question and it's the assumption we shall look at. See they like to point to that section and then claim that people who are not in their society cannot engage in certain actions. Now these actions are the ones which, if restricted to one group, will allow them to hijack our courts. And they claim that Section 15 means only they can engage in a certain amount of actions. But Section 15 follows previous sections, specifically Section 3 and Section 1.1. Hello, I just tried phoning you. Apparently you couldn't hear me. Oh, no, I couldn't. Sorry about that. Oh, that's okay. I was trying to use voice over internet protocol. Oh, okay. Um, how, how can I help you? Well, I don't know if you can answer the question. If not, maybe you can direct me to someone, but it seems to me a simple one, so I'm hoping you might be able to and you can settle a little uh, a debate I'm having with uh, a voice in my head. Mm -hmm. Um. You guys appoint judicial justices of the peace, right? Um, I'm not sure how they are appointed, so uh, I would have to have someone call you back on that. I see. Uh, my, my question is, are they all equal? Or are some of them, like if a judicial justice of the peace, say there's one who's Jewish and one who's Catholic, does the Catholic one have a greater degree of judicial immunity and impartiality and independence than the other one? Hello? Um, yes, I'm still here. I'm, I'm, I'm not certain what you mean. So you mean there's discrimination on um, religion? Yeah, well, not necessarily religion. That was just one example, but whether it's religion or whether or not they're a Freemason or a member of the Knights of Columbus or whether or not they were a lawyer or never a lawyer, uh, I want to know whether or not they all enjoy the same level of judicial independence or whether or not the level of independence they enjoy is dependent upon uh, who they knew beforehand. My name's Rob, mm -hmm. and my number is What's the last name, please? Uh, Menard. Family name is Menard, M-E-N-A-R-D. Okay. Is that the phone number? Yeah, you, you confused me, because the first zero you went 08, and then you, the last one you said zero, so... Oh, okay. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> are you Are you half American? 
try and have someone call you back on this. Any idea when that would be? I, I'm stepping out in about an hour or so. And do you have voicemail? Uh, yes, or can I give you an email? And I would very much prefer, well, either way, but an email would be great. Can I give uh, you my... No, I think that someone, if, if I'm able to have someone call you, it would be by phone. Okay, well, that's... They can leave a message. Okay. Okay, good. Thank you. She sounded nice. You caught me at the critical phase of my rice making. Okay. Um, I can call back later if you would like. No, this is good. I'm here now. Thank you. Okay. Uh, um, I understand you called the Attorney General's office last week and you were looking for some information about the appointment of Judicial Justices of the Peace. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. Um, is there anything specifically that you're... What about just the general how one becomes a, a JJP? Well, I have a not, well that that's that would be kind of interesting too. My key key uh, question though is whether or not um, they are all uh, imbibed with the same level of, of power and immunity or independence, uh, regardless of whether uh, uh, regardless of their uh, previous religious affiliations or uh, group affiliations or anything like that. Oh. So if they are a JJP, every JJP, um, by, by just holding that job, uh, has the same level of, of judicial independence as any other JJP. That, that's what I thought. So, so uh, like, it, some of them are drawn from the law society, and from what I understand, but I've met a couple who were not, who, uh, who had never been lawyers. Um, that is true. The, there's been some change over the last several years um, in terms of the... Uh, the different, the different, uh, the best way in which to have JJPs fill the various functions that they that they do. So there are uh, a number that have been appointed, uh, you know, years past. And in, in years past, they some were lawyers and some were not. There was no requirement for that. Uh, more recently, the move has been to be appointing uh, only lawyers to the position. So that's why there are. There are, it looks uh, like they want to take care, take control of the entire courts. Because one of the things I, uh, what I noticed was I was looking at the uh, the Legal Profession Act, and I know the Law Society uses this extensively in order to um, try to stop people from engaging in, in certain actions. Uh, and yet, when you look at Section 1.1, uh, if all judicial justices are in fact uh, uh, in if they all enjoy the same level of independence, uh, then it's clear that the Legal Profession Act is only applicable against lawyers, provided they're not acting as a judicial justice of the peace. Otherwise, if you interpret it that uh, it's applicable to everyone, you end up with some judicial justices of the peace being bound by that act and some not being bound, uh, with the ones who have come from the law society not being bound, but the ones who didn't come from the law society being bound. Okay. No, no, not at all. Uh, all I am looking at is whether or not, from the Attorney General's perspective, the judicial justices of the peace must all be treated equally uh, and with the same level of independence or whether or not their religion or the fact that they were once a lawyer determines the level of independence that they enjoy. Okay. I thank you for your time. And what was your name again? Uh, my name is Neil. Hi, Neil. Okay. Okay, thanks for your time.